today I'm going to be talking about rear wing location on race cars. And this is something that I see a lot of rather weird explanations on the internet about. So I'm going to try and clear up a few little bits and pieces that I often see that are wrong in their explanations. And this shouldn't be too long a video, just we're going to go through some of the basics. Basically, when it comes to rear wing, there are two axes you can essentially move it in. You can move it forwards and backwards, or up and down. When it comes to the forwards-backwards movement of the wing, one of the key considerations to take into account is aerodynamic balancing. Now, if you move your wing further forwards, you can make more downforce with it for the same level of aero balance, because it's a simple problem of levers around the center of gravity. The further forward it is, the more force you can apply for the same level of aero balancing. The further backwards it is, like if you imagine we had it two meters off the car's back, we couldn't make very much downforce at all, or otherwise all the weight going down it would be on the rear wheel, and we'd end up with a very understeery car. Then there's also aero balancing in terms of up-down. The higher up a wing is, the more its drag component is going to try and provide a torque around the rear wheel, and that's going to cause the front wheel to lose force, because we're going to end up with an increase of force there from the drag, decreasing force there, and so that will increase our understeer tendency. So the higher we go, the more the drag force pulls back. Thankfully, the drag force is an order of magnitude less than the downforce force. Most car wings would be in around the 10 to one range. So it's not too much of an issue. But those are the main sort of aero balancing requirements. On top of that, we have the interaction requirements. If we just look at our standard boot here, if we draw our wing here, sorry for the crude drawing, but Underneath the wing is going to be a low pressure region. On top of the wing is going to be a high pressure region, okay? As we move the wing lower and lower towards the boot, this low pressure region here is going to start to interact with the top of the boot. Now, what does that mean? That means that this boot here is getting low pressure on the top of it. That means it's making lift. So if you imagine that we sat this wing just off the boot there, you can see that the entire low pressure field would be on the boot. So we'd actually end up with almost no downforce from the low pressure side of the wing, which is actually the strongest part of the wing in terms of making downforce, but we wouldn't be seeing much downforce from it at all because we would just be sucking against the boot and they'd cancel each other out. This is why we can counter it with things like boot lid spoilers, where if we have a wing above here, this will be low pressure down here, but this bootless spoiler will naturally create a high pressure region here. These two fields will interact and they'll end up sort of cancelling each other out around the boot area and so you can end up with reasonable boot performance and still decent wing performance. So the boot lid interaction is obviously a very important thing in deciding your up-down wing placement. But there is another interaction going on here with this low pressure field and that is perhaps further away than you may anticipate. You have a diffuser down here. This low pressure field, assuming you have a strong enough wing, is going to start to interact with the low pressure area at the rear of the car here, which will help with the diffuser extraction. So if this wing is rearward here, and its low pressure field gets into there, it increases this low pressure field here, and then this will cause this diffuser to have better extraction there. It's one of the many advantages of running a larger end plate at the back, um, if you have a look at the end plates that I recently designed for AJ Hartman Racing, you'll see that they had big extension and some of the big benefit gained wasn't so much in increasing the efficiency of the wing, which they did do, but it also improved the pressure transference towards the rear area of the car and thus gets better under tray extraction and therefore better downforce across the entire car. But by the same token, we don't want to be moving this wing too far rearwards or we run into the aero balance issues we had before and you won't be able to run the wing at as severe an angle of attack. So basically, you theoretically want the wing forwards to make most downforce of the wing for balance, but this causes issues with interactions with the rear of the car. So instead, you move it backwards a little bit to solve that issue. You get better extraction from the diffuser, but the wing can't run as much aero anymore. So it's going to be a little bit of a compromise always. Of course, we come to the final scenario, which is a bit of a myth that I've seen perpetuated a lot, which is you need your wing above your roof line to work effectively. And while it's true that often wing efficiency will be improved in the more free stream air, there's no reason why it has to be above the roof line. And I drew the three different scenarios here to kind of illustrate the point. 
In this case here, we're probably gonna end up with separation off the rear because this rear window line is so steep. So in this case, probably would be advantageous to run your wing up clear of that separator region so it's getting a nice free stream airflow coming along there. However, in this smoother transition case here, or even this case here, your streamlines are going to come along and be quite clean along the back. Even here, they'll be quite clean. So there's no reason why you can't run your wing here and have it still be very effective. There's no reason why it has to be above the roof line for it to work. There's no aerodynamic reason behind it. Um, as you travel up further and further, yes, the flow will straighten out, like the streamlines up here will be closer to straight, but that will just be changing how your wing behaves in terms of angle of attack behavior, things like that. There's no reason you can't run it lower. In terms of efficiency going higher, it may not even always be more efficient to go higher because in free stream air, you've taken away the effective twist in a straight wing. So if you watch my video on twisted wings, you'll see there can be efficiency gains by having a straight wing in a downwash center flow. And by the same token, you can also use a twisted wing down here if you want to gain total downforce across the entire span. So watch that video for more clarification there. But the fundamental gist that I want you to take away from this is, is that there is zero reason why you cannot run your wing below the roof. It should still work fine. The key thing more is to look at how the pressure field is interacting here. And if you just make a little homemade manometer, it would actually be relatively easy for you to put a little pressure tapping there and pressure tapping there and adjust your wing height and see when those pressure fields are interacting. It really shouldn't be too difficult for you if you wanna try that out. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Leave a comment below on what video you'd like to see next. And hopefully, I'll see you next time.